Good day, everyone. It's uh, just at the 11 o'clock East Coast, 8 o'clock West Coast, uh, California time um, hour. And so people still look like they're coming in. So we'll just give it another minute or two. Hello, Renita. Thanks for attending. Hi, good morning. Hello, everyone. Oh, we got a we got a we got a big crowd out there, Renita. Some heavy hitters are joining in. I can see. We yeah, be, we better a be few good. familiar names, right? Let's still, let's give it another minute. Okay, I got 801 on my side here. Well, I mean, the good news is this is going to be recorded and we'll share this out with everyone, of course. Okay, are you ready, Renita? Should we get this rolling? Yep, sure. Excellent. All right, well, good day, everyone. And uh, thank you for attending this webinar, introducing the FastMan Extended ECM for DocuSign eSignature solution. Um, we've changed the product name from just a DocuSign connector or an integration for that matter, because the solution has proven itself and become the standard in automating end-to-end -end signature processing using the OpenText Extended ECM platform. Um, it's really achieved that status, that level at this point. I'm Brian LaPointe, Vice President of Sales and Digital Signature Solutions. Pleased to be joined by uh, Renita Day. She's a highly skilled senior ECM consultant from the FastMan Professional Services team. Myself and Renita have been working in the OpenText ecosystem for you know, many, many years now. And we're very pleased to be able to bring and share, uh, bring this type of content and share best practices with the, uh, the OpenText community. So Renita, maybe just uh, give it a quick uh, shout out to say hello to the audience. Yeah, hello everyone, and glad to be here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So without further ado, let's kind of, Let's kind of kick it off. I think two things I'm going to do right now. Um, I got two questions to ask you through the polling system. So if you would participate, I would appreciate that using this uh, go to webinar system. So let me see if I can pull this off. Um, here we go. First question. Have you seen a poll yet, Renita? Uh, here we go. I got to click this yep. button. Yep. No, it's okay. Okay, first question. I, so first of all, you're using DocuSign. How are you using it in your organization? We, we're using it. It's part of our corporate standard. Um, or option two is we're not using it, but we're planning on using it. So it's in that planning stage. Uh, and then, of course, we're not using DocuSign. So it's really about the DocuSign question, um, not e-signature in general. So I think we're seeing... Uh, Okay, so 43% of the audience, what I'm seeing right now, is saying they're using DocuSign. Oh, oh, it's shifting around. Give it a second, give it a second. So what I see, 56% of the audience is saying they're not using DocuSign. 40% are saying they, um, oh, it keeps moving, interesting. 45% are saying that they are using DocuSign in their organization right now. 9% uh, say they're planning. Yeah, good, good to know. That's why I want to kind of level set on. And we're not saying that you have it integrated. We're just saying that it's it's being used as the e-signature solution. Um, okay, let me see if I can get one more question. Watch it. Mm -hmm. Up. All right, do you want to ask the question, Renita? Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so I'm basically asking right here, are you using any of the extended ECM integrations today? I, have, you, have you moved to like business workspaces? Are you, by extended ECM integrations to the open text platform, I mean extended ECM for SAP, Espahana, success factors. Maybe you got Salesforce going, maybe you're doing AppWorks um, type, type workflow things. So I'm trying to get, um, get an understanding of that. So that you're integrating basically a, some kind of a, a, a lead application, right? Um, so it's very high of the results that I'm seeing. So I'm seeing 67% yes, 11% planning in the planning stage, and 22% say no. So when I see no, I think people are using traditional, you know, enterprise content management file folder structures and so forth. I think when you're tying in more of your lead applications, you're, you move into that business workspace um, mentality or, or design, let's say, um, and having the content in context and so forth. So excellent, excellent to know. Thank you for sharing um, the information. So 67% yes, 11% in the planning stage, 22% no. Close that out. Okay. All right, we're still on the first slide here. So moving along. Okay, let's get let's kick this thing off. Let's let's talk about the benefits first about doing um, you know an integration to open text. It's best practice to initiate, you know, the reason why is because it's best practice to initiate your signing and signature process from within your information management platform. You know, whether you know that as uh, open text extended ECM, we call it content suite. Some call it SAP Extended ECM, or even our friends um, in the government of Canada, they've renamed it GC Docs is a, is a common name that I hear. Many of you have your own internal name for your, 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 your open text ECM system, quite frankly. Um, but in any case, by taking this approach, you're encouraging your business users to use the information management system for a high value process when you integrate e-signature with it. Um, as knowledge workers, we're frequently waiting for approvals, many times via signature, um, to be able to move forward on important tasks and initiatives, right? And then furthermore, it's, it's, it's really a nice workflow benefit to your business users when the documents are automatically returned from the DocuSign cloud and stored in your information management system. This cuts down on multiple copies in the system, and it improves your overall records management hygiene. So you start to do things more automated, which is nice. Um, if you're using multiple lead business applications, as my polls were saying, you know, you may be using them for CRM, um, human resources or HCM, human capital management, ERP, or even collaboration func functions where, um, you know, Microsoft 365 or even something you did in AppWorks. Um, standardizing the signature execution from within your information management system will simplify the DocuSign integration overhead and, and, and then allow you to have that single point of truth for all your documents and unstructured content. So instead of doing all individual integrations with those lead applications, if you just, you can do one um, as far as the e-signature piece at your information management um, platform level um, and then have everything flow and, and have and then share that out with all your systems. So it's just another approach or, or another best practice way of approaching it. Um, and like I said, many organizations are moving away from that traditional file folder organizational hierarchy that you find in shared drives and, and, and many legacy, uh, you also see it in your SharePoint sites too, it's all over the place. Um, and what they do is they're developing business workspaces, you know, linked to these lead application objects for a better content and context view. We'll show you, we'll, we'll, we have a nice little demonstration, we'll show you exactly what we mean in action later on in the presentation. Okay, so as both an open text and a DocuSign distinguished partner, Fastman brings deep knowledge in the area of electronic signatures. Our extended ECM for DocuSign simplifies the sending and ad hoc signing of documents directly from the content suite function menu. This includes both a smart UI and a classic in the classic interfaces, uh, starting as far back as the early days of 16.2 of uh, Content Suite to the latest versions uh, of Extended ECM released at 23.2 and you know soon to be 23.3 uh, on the OpenText platform. This 
essentially provides you the most flexibility no matter what content server version and user interface preference you may have, okay? Furthermore, the Fastman Extended ECM for DocuSign provides, um, we provide you these advanced signing profile functionality that lets you control the rights to sign specific documents based on, on several content suite uh, criteria, such as the location of the document in the repository, the category that's assigned to it, along with a, a classification that's assigned to it, or even a MIME type, or any combination of those. It's these profiles um, that are powerful, and they give you a good amount of self-service configuration and control of the business process, which, which makes it easier to roll out. Again, providing signature capabilities from within Content Suite will drive better user adoption of the platform and overall better record keeping. You know, before we dive into sp a specific demonstration scenarios here, let's first talk about some overall capabilities, okay? The Fastman Extended ECM for DocuSign, it really shines when it comes to smart UI support, and it delivers a very polished look, okay? This includes, um, we have a few things that we do. We have the signature status widget, right? So it can tell you, you know, where your documents are um, in motion. Um, there's a smart UI and a classic, but a smart UI workflow signing activity. So if you have uh, workflows that you're already using um, or going to develop new ones, there's an there's a activity to help you with that. Um, and we also give you the ability to send out of content suite using pre-existing DocuSign templates that are in the DocuSign cloud. So you could initiate um, right from the um, open text um, uh, smart UI uh, interface, um, like an NDA template or something like that. So it makes it very easy. And then signed documents will flow back into the repository when they're done. For those, who used, for those of you that have used smart UI um, on a tablet or your iPhone or an, or, or, or an iPad, um, you must have experienced a little frustration navigating menus or hovering that function tool that comes with the uh, OpenText smart UI. So to solve on that, Fastman, we decided to add a, a little enhancement. We've added these, uh, we call them enhanced tablet buttons or icons to improve the user experience. Since, you know, it's typically the executives that are signing documents. So if they need to do ad hoc signing from the interface or just to make it easy to send things out on the fly from a tablet, we've added these buttons here. It's really a nice way to remove friction in the business process is what it comes down to. Okay, so I had mentioned the profiles. So the Fastman signing profiles, as I said, they're the true power behind the extended ECM for DocuSign. And it lets you configure your signing scenarios according to your business rules. It's these signature profiles that let you control the rights to sign specific documents based on the file type, the classification, as I mentioned, the category, the location, maybe only you can sign from a certain location. Uh, which is very common and you can set up as many of these profiles as your business process requires um, and as you can see from the example i have on the screen here we're displaying separate profiles on the right hand side for you know maybe you have a contract life cycle management um, um, solution you're trying to achieve here or hr recruitment or the procurement side of things you can have different you can have as many as you like and name them what you want that's related to your business process they're very configurable um, and you can use these um, uh, to, to drive the user experience um, within Smart UI or Classic. Um, and users, you know, they're able to, you know, and so what, and what you can see down below is we have a, um, what the, the profile looks like to the user. Um, it basically controls once they select the documents and then lets them, you know, choose the, the profile that, that they will use for sending and it'll drive their business process from here and, 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 and then control the rules as far as how the documents will flow back into the content suite system too, automatically. So we'll show this in action and look for the profiles as we do our demonstrations. For those signature processes that require more, let's say downstream configuration, before sending in the DocuSign web application, you can use a Fastman signature profile configured for embedded sending. And what this does, it lets you select your documents in OpenText 
and then launch them into the DocuSign web application, whether it's one document or many documents. And then from there, you're in DocuSign at this point, you can use any of the available DocuSign functions to complete, such as adding additional or more or adding recipients to your DocuSign envelope. Or maybe you wanna add a supplemental document to, to the envelope or customize the email messages or apply, or actually even at this point, apply a, docus, a DocuSign template that you already have. All the advanced features are gonna be at your fingertips. And then um, you can even add the signature fields, of course, it's very popular at this point. But the whole point is you can start the process open text, it'll take you with the documents in the, into the DocuSign environment. And when you're done, um, the completed and signed, and when the documents are completed and signed by all the recipients, the documents will automatically return to your open text system and be stored according to the FastMan signature profile. So it lets you have a lot of nice control over the, uh, the process and simplify it for everybody in your business. Okay, let me take a quick breather. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat. I think I hear people in the background or people responding already, so we may be getting some questions and so forth. Um, but I just want to take a quick pause myself, a little breather here. Renita, do we have any feedback or comments that you want to share right now so far? You don't have to cover the questions necessarily, but um, any thoughts or anything? No, I think you covered it pretty well. And the whole point is to have the single point of truth. Uh, the whole point of ECM, right? And allowing the documents to come back just uh, solidifies that concept for us, right? So, yeah. Great, great. Well, thank you for that. Um, yeah, so any questions, like I said, bring them in. We have our experts kind of monitoring and, and responding. So you'll get, you'll get hopefully uh, instant feedback or quick feedback, maybe not instant. So next up, um, let me say it's, next up, it's these advanced features that really distinguish the FastMan Extended ECM for DocuSign from just an ordinary integration, okay? The FastMan Connector came to market back in 2013, quite frankly, so a long time ago, and initially supported um, the on-premise DocuSign signature appliance solution. So there was a, uh, there was a different solution at the time. Um, later, support for eSignature Cloud was added, including a FastMan registered integrator key. And this simplified cloud deployment and removed unnecessary project friction and, and even cost. Um, the FastMan team has been very busy these past few months and, uh, and pleased to showcase more capabilities with a focus on fast deployment, smart UI extensions, access to DocuSign templates, anchor tags, and even improved envelope rules. Um, you'll be able to address, and what this does, it'll let you address a much larger set of business requirements and use cases as you roll out your e-signature uh, processes. So, very important right here. Uh, and it's, it's just important to mention that the FastMan Extended ECM for DocuSign is a registered DocuSign integration. Why is this important? Because it will save you time in securely setting up your integration to the DocuSign cloud service. Otherwise, you'll be solo troubleshooting your production in development environments using a custom integrator key, getting it tested, certified by DocuSign, and promoting it to your, your various accounts. Um, it's a little more complicated than it sounds. Since FastMan is, has a well-established relationship with DocuSign, we can help you navigate um, both the DocuSign and the OpenText ecosystem, and then share many of the best practices that we have. So it's a big value add, um, just the way it's architected and the, and the knowledge behind it. Furthermore, it's important to mention, um, it efficiently uses the DocuSign Connect webhook interface. This way, completed envelopes are immediately returned to your OpenText system. Um, this a speedier way of doing things, one, um, will be faster for your, it'll be faster for your end user experience. And then even your administrators, as, when you get involved with rolling this out and testing, it's good to get the instant feedback and not have to wait, um, you know, minutes or, or five, 10 minutes for things to be returned. With the webhook, it basically notifies us and then the documents are returned to the content suite system. So it's, it's half the time of like uh, custom integrations. Um, 
The other thing is this, a single OpenText extended ECM instance can connect with multiple DocuSign production and their sub accounts, okay? So we can take one OpenText extended ECM and connect it to many uh, DocuSign accounts and even their sub accounts. Many DocuSign customers have more than one account, this is the reality. Uh, in fact, I have several enterprise accounts with more than 10 unique sub accounts. Um, customers do this to, dis uh, to distribute the account administration, either by line of business or an autonomous department, let's say. Um, I think HR may want to have their own sub account where finance wants theirs, or maybe a, um, a big, uh, bigger enterprise that has you know divisions, and so complete different departments have their different ones. Um, and so that just as an example. Um, also, sub accounts from DocuSign can be located um, on different data centers to achieve the, the data residency requirements they may have. So there's many reasons why people will do this. And DocuSign offers data centers in the US, Canada, EU, and Australia. So these are options. So you can be one organization, you could, and you may need to have data residency in those four different data centers, and you can set up sub accounts to handle that situation. Um, not to mention they have a FedRAMP option for the U.S. federal government. And then also um, in Canada, this, it, it does achieve protected B status also. So it, uh, the DocuSign platform itself has a Canadian data center and, it, and it's been, it, it, it's able to meet the protected B requirement. Um, more, uh, more on this, or let me, one more point to make here, I would say is that, you know, Business, admit, business administrators on the OpenText platform can configure these signature profiles. Um, they can manage the FastMan user licensing and they can clear tokens. So, so the responsibility is not solely on the content server admin. Content server admin can do the basic connecting the, everything together, but any of the business configuration can be happened by a business administrator. So you can separate those roles, which is a very nice way to go about it. Okay. So a um, lot to say here. Uh, we can talk, a lot of questions usually come out of this area. We have a lot of expertise in helping you basically connect a, a lot of times it's a cloud to ground connection that's occurring here. So um, we're happy to engage with you and, and work with you on that. Do you need to meet EU and UK qualified electronic signature uh, QES standards, right? So we got you covered with a turnkey solution using AI-enabled identification or signer-held or signer-held handheld uh, certificate options that you, maybe you bring your certificate um, using a fast the fast man embedded sending that I showed you that that signature profile capability you can incorporate QES signing with the Fastman ECM um, extended ECM for DocuSign solution. In this example that I'm showing in these screens right now. Um, I'm showcasing a, an actual finished product of a QES signed document that was sent from OpenText, that I sent from my OpenText system. Um, the signer was um, AI identified, you know, and, and so forth using the DocuSign um, um, solution. And then there was, then at the end of the day, the document was sealed with a DocuSign French digital certificate, an individual certificate, certificate for the actual signer and then automatically stored back in the OpenText extended ECN system. Um, it works well. It's a great little solution for when uh, for those that need to have uh, collect uh, qualified signatures on their documents. Mentioned this early on in the poll questions and even the introduction here. If you're using business workspaces with other extended ECM integrations such as salesforce.com, Esfahana, Success, Success Factors, Microsoft 365, AppWorks, um, you'll be able to expose signing functionality through, through that embedded content widget at the document level. Um, and you can see in some of the screenshots right here in the upper left-hand corner, that's actually extended ECM for Salesforce. Uh, the, the widget in the middle there is really you know, extended ECM. Right from there, you can basically get at your signing functionality. Down below, I have the um, what it looks like directly within Content Suite, which is kind of nice too. So this is it's 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 an ideal solution to complement um, your business processes that you're rolling out with extended ECM. Okay, and we'll show this shortly. Okay, Fastman, the envelope rules. So 
The DocuSign envelope rules are controlled at the signature profile level and provide maximum flexibility in configuring your signature process. Okay. These are also, there are also very, some very specific rules available to you, such as including the DocuSign certificate of completion appended to the signed document so that it comes back into OpenText as a single PDF. That's a very common use case. The certificate of completion from DocuSign essentially is the audit trail and the evidence of the signing that occurred. So you may want that to come in as a uh, appended to the document. So it's just one document, or you may want to have a rule where I don't want it appended to the document. I want it to come in as a separate document, you know, and be able to be identified. So it so it's really two separate documents coming in. So with a profile, we can we can basically configure that scenario for you um, to enforce it um, across the board. Um, maybe a, an envelope rule is the first signature is internal, and basically what this is telling you or telling us is that you want to basically do ad hoc signing. So you're in content suite. I just want to select a document and I want to sign it with DocuSign. Ad hoc signing. I don't want to deal with a workflow or a business process. I just need to sign that document, approve it so I can get business moving on and do it quickly. That's what that does it for you. Um, are you using uh, anchor tags? This allows you to enforce your signature block placement. Um, there's up to 15 tags available, including the standard sign, initial, date sign, et cetera type tags. And this is useful for setting document templates that reside in Content Suite. Um, or you want to basically do embedded sending on the profile, right? So I want to basically um, I, I want to basically have it bring the documents and me into DocuSign through an embedded signing experience or sending experience. Quite frankly, I'm sending the documents out in this scenario, um, and I will finish configuration in DocuSign before sending off the uh, for the workflow. You know. By building these capabilities into the FastMan signature profiles, it provides you with the maximum configuration and flexibility. And again, these things are all controlled at the business administrator level. So you really can train your users or your power users to own the business process and configure this, this information and not solely rely on the, the core administrators on the content suite system, which is nice. I mentioned anchor tags just a minute ago. Um, for those that need to initiate sending DocuSign envelopes from the document uh, templates stored and generated in OpenText, extended ECM for DocuSign supports over um, 15 specific DocuSign anchor tags. This is very useful when you need to define the signature blocks and locations on your forms before you're sending them into DocuSign. This approach is highly effective at reducing, you know, not in good order or that NIGO error errors that, that's uh, in the financial services uh, vertical people talk about in, in essentially increasing the completion of successful transactions. It's, it's these anchor tags, um, or these anchor tags are configurable within FastMan signature profiles, giving you more control over the business process. Additionally, this feature is very complimentary if, you have, if you're doing a customer commu communication management, CCM or like you know, OT Extreme, a solution where documents are auto-generated and, and, and then they're ready for signature execution. So you can drop the tags in, uh, you can basically put the signature blocks into the documents before sending them to DocuSign. So it's a good way to get end-to-end um, -end automation. Uh, I mentioned it quickly before, but one more time, most DocuSign e-signature customers do use the DocuSign template capability and share a library with, of those templates with their users. I mentioned an NDA template, maybe there's other application forms that um, are, at, um, are provided to people to use. Um, and this makes it easy for your users to pick from a list and ensure that they're using the most up-to-date forms too. Use case examples include employment applications, NDA, new account opening applications, or any other standard forms that require signature. Um, these DocuSign templates are also the hub for not only providing the correct document forms, but driving the entire e-signature process. For instance, the signing order, uh, the messages that get sent via email, reminders, when the reminders get sent, overall branding, what logos and so forth. And then, of course, very important, where do the signatures and the signature block locations on these documents and the fields that people need to fill out? 
Um, that's what it's about. So having the ability to access the DocuSign templates and initiate a signing process from within OpenText is available to you. Uh, and again, like everything, completed envelopes are returned to OpenText as a essentially a com can be sent back as a combined PDF, including um, the certificate of completion. So you can have those all come back into your your records your records management system, information management platform. Okay, we're ready for software demonstration. Okay, um, I'm going to hand off to Renita in a second here. Uh, I do want to point out, we'll send this information out to you, but we do have a few quick scenarios that we're going to showcase to you today. However, I wanted to point out these FastBin business process scenarios we have posted on YouTube. So, you know, we, they, they do take longer to view than we have time for today. So I just wanted to point them out to you. But we got procure to pay, employee management, and even organizational restructuring restructuring in the OpenText content suite system using the FastMan Bridge connector. So we kind of take the best of everything into a business process um, in, in, in a couple of different scenarios for you and, you know, show how we can combine um, OpenText content suite with the, the DocuSign e-signature uh, solution. Uh, with that, Renita, I think these are going to be our little, some of our demonstrations we have ready for everybody today. If you're ready right. to take over the screen and do your yep. goodness, I'm ready for you. Uh, you may have to change the presenter and make me a presenter. Yep. I can do it myself. Okay. There I go. I don't know if you can see the screen yet or it's loading. You can? Okay, that's good. Great. So you had four scenarios set up and um, I have brought up a screen where we will go through them one by one. And I think reviewing the profile as we go in is also helpful because it gives us a understanding of how are the different ways in which we can configure uh, the system to you know act differently for different processes, right? So I'll start off with uh, the internal or the ad hoc signature as you were calling them, right? And you can see I'm in 23.1 content server. I have smart UI configured with a few widget and a node browsing view up here, right? So let me just click on the first sample document here. So it's a simple Word document. It doesn't require much. It just need uh, the user who is logged in to sign the document. Uh, it might be a legal correspondent, as you can see here, or maybe even an HR document, right? Like a HR personal types in a document and they need to sign it, uh, not send it to like multiple people, right? They just need to put their signature to make that document official. And this is what we are planning to do right now. So as I said, I have the inline uh, sign button here, or I could do it from the function menu right there. Oops. So you can see sign with DocuSign. We also introduced multiple signing uh, with our latest release, Brian. So if I had multiple documents to sign, I could have selected them and done a sign from DocuSign from the multi action button, uh, which I'll, I'll come back in a few minute but yeah there are quite a few options to start the signing process now this is a simple one so i'm just going to click on the pencil icon and as you were saying uh, depending upon the profile it will pick only the ones which match the criteria of your profile and give you only those options for this one i'm going to use the correspondent and the uh, accounting approval as you can see here and there's a small message for me uh, it says that you'll be asked to sign the document and you'll be the only person who will be signing this document. And that's what I want, right, for this scenario at least. So you can see sign with DocuSign option. Uh, it takes you to DocuSign for authentication if you have not done it uh, in the last eight hours, but I did a demo run just before the meeting. So you can see I was logged in in the system, right? Uh, as you can see, the document opens up in DocuSign signing view, this, this is called the embedded signing view from DocuSign. Um, and you can see the document is being given to me with all the uh, fields that I can choose from. Now, this is a simple one. All I need to do is 
put in my signature, maybe my name and the date on which I signed it, right? Uh, this is a free flowing form. I can decide what to choose. Now, if there were anchor tags or anything like that, it would have asked me to put the signature in the correct order, but this is a simple example. So uh, just asking me to put in the signatures in the correct places. And then all the other options that you see in the DocuSign UI are also available to you if you want to use them. Now, I'm happy with this. I've read the document, so I'm going to click on the finish. And as this is an ad hoc signature process, the process is going to end right now. And in a few seconds, we'll see that the signed copy is sent back to us in a PDF format. So I'll just refresh it and wait for it to come back. Let's give it a second. Okay. So I've got this notification uh, from DocuSign, basic uh, notification that you get. This is on the completion. I do have the setting in DocuSign which allows it to attach the file in it, but you can disable it as well. Some customers do that because they want the document to be in content server. That's the whole purpose of it. So you can see that in a few seconds, the document is now back. I'd like to show a few things in the screen as well because a few important uh, I think metadata gets added to the document when when the file comes back and it's important uh, to note them down. So one of the main things is the audit tab. So you can see up here that when I started the process, the version was reserved. Um, this is not very important in this scenario because I'm just signing the document on the fly, but think of a scenario when the document goes out for signature and it is out for a few days. You don't want people to come and edit the document. So reserving the document is a very good idea. And then once the signature process is completed in DocuSign, a new version gets added. A small audit trail gets added saying that this document was signed and then you can also see that the unreserved status was added up here, right? And if I go to the versions, you can also see how the versions are going to get affected. So this document was added by admin, but I have logged in as Runita Day up here and I did the signature. So with my account, the document was reserved, unreserved, and the version added, right? And if I kind of open this document up, right? So let me do that very quickly. You can see the document envelope and the signatures that were added. Now, this is the same document that went out and came back, but with the signature, right? Uh, how did we do that? So it's all driven by our profiles that we talked about earlier. So I have the profile right here. So this is an enable profile, as you can see, and I have put two filters on that. Both are based on classification. So what this says is if the document has either the correspondence classification or the invoice classification, then I want this profile to be activated on it. And uh, on this particular document, I do have the correspondence uh, classification added. So based on that, you only saw the four profiles that are there. I have actually more than 20 profiles on the system, but you only saw four of them. Um, it's actually a combination because I do have file types as well. I don't. I have given all the document types, but sometimes you would restrict only Word documents. You don't really want PDF to go out and come back. So you can kind of like select that. And the main options that I think, which was very useful here, was to have this selection. So I, I use the internal signature first, which means I signed as a sender, right? So you can see the first signature is set up as yes, and I didn't want any additional signer. So those are set up as no, and I didn't even use any anchor tags up here, right? So uh, a very simple way in which you can have different profiles set up for different use cases, which we'll see in a few seconds, but it kind of like drives in the point that you were trying to ma uh, make earlier with your slides that, you know, different processes having different, uh, set up so that you can drive your business process, right? I'll take a break. If you have anything to add, please go in and then we'll move on to the next one. No, 
I think this has been one of the popular use cases we needed, the ad hoc signing capability. People just need to approve and get it done mm -hmm. in a simple way. It's easy to train people, and it's a checkbox on anybody's e-signature rollout. That's right. Okay, so I'll go to the second one. Um, so this was more like I was a sender, I was a signer. Sometimes it may happen that you may want to send it out to different people, maybe within the organization or outside of your organization as well, right? And that's where this profile might come in handy. So I'll open up the profile first and then we'll have a look. Now this is a combination profile. That means I have two selection criteria. I want the classification as well as I want the location. So only if both the criteria are match, I want this profile to be activated. So you can think of scenarios where uh, you may have like different folders in HR uh, and then you have created different profiles and then based on those things you want to drive your business process. So you can set up your location classification categories up here and then down here um, you can see that I have first signature internal setup as yet, but I also have additional signers up here, right? So I can send it out to different people as well. And then you can define how many people you want to send it out to. So um, default would be two, but a maximum of only 10 users are allowed. So if you increase this number, you'll be allowed to add more people to send it out to, right? Uh, now let's just have a look how it would look in the system. So same thing. I'll click on the sign button. Uh, if I had only one profile matching, it will take that automatically. But as I have multiple profiles up here, it's giving me the option to select it. And whether I get to select it is based on all the filter criteria, as well as you can set up permissions on the profile itself. So uh, if you have like groups or uh, users who are you know supposed to look into only one profile you can kind of set their permissions as well so you'll only see that profile right so in here i have the DAC one uh, and as you can see that i got this new option which was not visible earlier uh, you can see here that it does not force you to sign but if you want uh, you know to sign the document in that case what you'll do is you will add yourself to the signing uh, you know, signers that you have here. So I'll put in two people in here. So first would be an internal one. So I'm just going to put fastmint.com. And the other one, let's say Jane Smith. But let me put my Outlook email on that. Right? So up here. And then once I have put all the correct details, so if my email is not right or something like that, it will not activate the button. But if I complete it properly, then the button will be activated for me, right? And when I click on it, what it is going to do is it's going to send out the envelope and then the DocuSign workflow will come into action. So now we will rely on the DocuSign workflow to get completed. And then once it is done, the document should flow back into Content Server. So I'll click here, done. I have my Outlook. I'll just bring it up on the screen up here. And you can see here that I got this document for signatures, right? So tag signing, I have the review button right up here. I click that and up here I have the continue option. Again, I didn't use the anchor tag, so uh, it's a fee flowing one and I can put the signature and the date up here, right? I'll finish this up. And then as per uh, the setup that we used, we have used two users. So it's now going to go to the second user. Up here, you can see I've received a document and I have the review button as well. I'm going to click on that and you can see the same document came up, but this one, has the previous signature as well. So now if I want, I can put in my signature as Jane Smith and finish it, right? Now, now that the document is completed, we expect it to go back to Content Server. So we'll wait for a few seconds for that to happen. So I'll just go back here, close this window and refresh this page up here. Okay. Uh, 
you can see the widget up here showing pending signature one. That was because it was uh, updated a few seconds back. And when Renita Day, I signed it uh, from my Outlook email, you can see that date came in. And then it was waiting for Jane Smith uh, to complete because Renita.day at Outlook.com had not performed that action at that moment. Um, in a few seconds, you'll see that if I refresh this page, you'll see that the number of signatures became zero in here because all the signatures on this document are completed now. So it gives you that status, right? Uh, you can go into a folder, see how many documents are pending for signature, who have signed it, who are yet to sign the document. If you want, you can follow up with them. And then once the signatures are completed, that count will decrease, obviously. And in here, I got the document back, but I also got the COC back. So I, I think you were talking about the COC document a little back time back. So this is my PDF document, which was signed. And in this case, I asked the COC to be returned back, but as separate document, not as a combined document. So you can see here, Renita Day signing it, and then Jane Smith signing it, right? And then the history of it. Uh, it depends what, how many users were there, uh, who signed it, when they signed it. So COC is obviously something that DocuSign provide, and we are kind of getting that data back as well. Good for record keeping purposes. I, I really like this scenario, Renita, for a couple of reasons. Um, you know, you're living completely, from a sending experience of a person that's doing work to send these documents out for approval and so forth, um, you can live completely in the open text environment. You got a status widget to show you where things are at, and then you have the profile to drive the process. And as you can see, the documents, in this case, you have them, the, the certificate of completion coming back as a separate document, because that's what your business process requires, right? As opposed to appending it to the last page. And you don't have to go, you know, from a sending point of view, you don't have to go into DocuSign at all. Right? It's very efficient. You can send things out. Um, if, if, if you can make your business process work like this, it's very efficient, I, I think. Yeah, and I think EU has that uh, requirement that the document should not be appended when it is signed, uh, the COC. So I think having the COC coming separately and the documents coming back as version is quite helpful for them as well. So, uh, you know, it, it really depends where you are located, what is your use case, and what is your process, how you want the documents to come back, right? And you have that option to kind of like set the profile in. It's it's these nuances just to make the point when you're trying to get a yeah. e-signature project off the ground that you know, and you're working with the business that become you know blockers if you don't have all yeah. the flexibility for the business. So right. having have a good tool set to, to manage these scenarios is important. Exactly. Right. Next one is I'm going to show embedded sending. So that's one of our new features, right? And it covers a plethora of uh, things that you can do with DocuSign. And I think you mentioned QES and we have used it for witnesses and whatnot uh, for our customers. So this one we are doing from uh, Salesforce actually. So I have a Salesforce account up here, which brings me to this particular node. And then this is the business workspace in Content Server or in Extended ECM, right? It's the same object. Uh, it's just that I have created a nice perspective on top of it. There are a few widgets up here. The documents are up here. And what I've done, the same widget that I had used earlier, I have embedded that in the workspace. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell me in this particular workspace how many documents are pending for signature, which gives me a very good um, idea about how many documents I sent out. I think it was, I think that worked out very great for this use case, right? Now I'm in uh, Salesforce up here and I'm just going to open up the document. So you can see is the new view, uh, legacy view is also supported. So up here, I have two documents. And as I said earlier, that we did add support for multiple documents as well. So I'm going to just select both the documents up here. And what it's going to do is, depending upon uh, both the documents, all the filter conditions are going to get calculated. And if a profile matches 
uh, the filter condition for both the documents. So because we are sending two documents, it has to match everything, right? Uh, if it matches, then my profile would uh, give me that option. So where is, oh, there you go, sign with DocuSign, right? Up here, I just have two profiles, not the four profiles I were get, getting earlier, because in this use case, uh, the profiles that match only two, so you can see up here. And then I'm getting a, a, a text box to enter a file name, right? That's because the profile has been set a little differently. In this case, I want to get a combined document. So I'm sending out two documents. Both those documents, when signed, should be combined as one PDF document and be added back to content server. So that's why I have defined it a little differently, and that's why the system is prompting me in a different way, right? So I'll just say agreement signed by account manager up here, right? And I'm going to click on the sign button. Now it's going to take me into DocuSign because I have used it using the embedded sending mode. And with sending mode, I can use any feature of DocuSign. And as you saw, as soon as it launched DocuSign, it's matching the templates in the background. So if I had templates uh, which I want to use, I could simply select that. You can see extended ECM source account related template and I can apply it. If you don't want to do that, that's okay as well. But because I use the template, it pre-populated all my fields up here, which is great, right? Uh, streamline the processes that you want. I have two users up here, Jane Smith, Renita Day, and then I'm just sending you a CC, just in case, right? And then the message is also up here on the bottom of the screen. Now, I can send it right away or I can tag the document. So up here, maybe I'll put one signature for Jane Smith and one for Renita. And then for the second document, because I used a template and that document was already tagged, it kind of like brought that data in as well. So I don't have to tag this document in particular, right? And if I want to like, uh, do any changes, add any other fields, I, I'm, I'm able to do that, right? On the screen is embedded sending. I'm going to click on the send button. And you can see it is done. Both the documents are reserved right now. And then in the pending document, you can see four pending documents because we have two documents each and both of them require two signatures, right? So you can see both the documents up here and then uh, who are supposed to sign it, right? So let's go back up here. You can see the document coming in. I'm going to open that up, continue. And this time I'm not getting the free flow one because I've tagged the document using the embedded sending view. So I'm getting the wizard, which drives the signing process. Obviously I can do it very quick. Uh, I have to read the document, obviously, but I can just do it right away. And it tells me where I need to sign. So not in good order error that you were talking about is also taken care here, right? And then once I'm done, I'll click on finish. And in the uh, embedded view, I also send it for parallel signing. So uh, it's one after another. You can, sorry, I did it for sequential. You can do it parallel or any other way as well, right? So. Uh, here I am finishing the document and as soon as I did that you can see this notification came up here So this is the same document you can see the both the document names up here and then I'll click on review Right and Sorry about that There you go Oh, I think I've done that, so I need to do this one. There I go. It's opening the document up. We can see again, I'm getting the wizard, the first signatures is already done. So I'm just doing the last two, clicking on finish. Yep. And it will be done in a few seconds. So no thanks. And I can drive this from condenser over now. This is my wizard. I can kind of like refresh it. 
you can see the four signature up here is not updated yet and then these are my two documents so in a few seconds i'll see another document coming in right and the reason for that is if i open up the profile just for a few seconds and scroll down you can see i don't have a lot of options i did have embedded sending view enabled so that is set to yes and i have combined documents set to yes and i have co6 set to yes so this is a completely different way in which the other two documents came back right so let's see if my document is back yet let me do a quick refresh it might take a few seconds sometimes so we'll give it a minute I've got the document back here, so should be any second. Yeah, and this is based on a webhook, so it happens uh, as soon as DocuSign is sending you that request to add the document back. Uh, it's no, nothing like a job or anything which is running every few minutes or anything like that, right? So we take that queue from DocuSign and get the file back. Let's see here if Oh, sorry. Let me just refresh the screen up here and see if the file is back or not. I think we are running a little late, so if the document doesn't come back, I'm going to hand it over to you in a few seconds, and then, it's a, it's yeah. A, but we've seen them come yeah. back before. Yeah, I know. So I'm going to just give it back to you and see what you have to add there, because we just have three minutes, and we want to wrap it up as well, right? No, this is great, the scenarios that you showed off. Um, Renita, you can um, send this mm -hmm. back to me. I'll wrap it up here, I guess. Let me yeah. Yeah, yeah, click. Or I gotta become the presenter, maybe. Do I need to make you the presenter again? Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. Okay. No, thank you for that. I think um, we went through um, these the three scenarios. The first three, we didn't do it. We didn't have time for anchor tags. Happy to take you through that. But we did the ad hoc, then we sent external signatures collecting those external signatures without even having to go in the docusign beautiful and then you saw the uh, embedded sending the power of that because it opens up everything docusign can do uh, we were showing that from a business workspace in salesforce uh, but that's also how you would do qes if you had qualified signatures you could do it from an embedded sending profile and that's how it kind of drives your process and so forth so thank you thank you thank you for those that was good um, and you know that's pretty much um, that's the the Fastman uh, extended ECM for DocuSign um, piece right here. So I think you understand now why we've um, we've kind of re rebranded it or renamed it um, extended ECM is because it, it is more than just an integration. It does far more than any uh, any other approaches that are out there today. And we just you know reach out to Fastman anytime you're trying to work on an e-signature pro um, project. We are a full-fledged DocuSign um, reseller. We're an SI partner with them, and we're you know many in an open text um, Solex and a Gold partner with them too. So um, we understand both ecosystems very well. Happy to you know jump on a session with you and, and, and work with you. Many of you know us for many of our other products, from Permissions Manager to um, you know, our, our new Access Manager um, SE and Pro. Um, and again, thank you for um, coming to the session. We'll get this information out to you. We had a pretty good audience today. Again, um, thanks for coming and um, enjoy your enjoy your day. Thanks, Renita. Thank you.